Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've had a great Monday. For some, the worst day of the week. And if it was a bad day, well, it's about to get a lot better. <laughs> Liv's just getting warmed up. <laughs> you can hear her giggling at me. Um, as, as usual with Liv's Lives Lies class, if you can donate anything to this, there's a link in the description, which goes to a PayPal. Otherwise, Liv's just sitting down on the mat. Let's have a great listen. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Um, if any of you saw the little um, description or the, or the thumbnail, um, we're focusing on strength this evening. So um, obviously everybody's abilities are quite different. Um, it's, an, it's an all levels class, so there's nothing uh, uh, too crazy, but do feel free to modify things as you see fit if something's feeling too challenging or you're just like, nah, that's not for me. Um, but also do try to challenge yourself, you know, um, we've probably, I mean, I don't want to generalize, but we've probably all been quite stationary today. So do um, see what you're capable of and um, see if you can keep keep moving with us. So instead of seated, we're going to start lying on our backs today. So give yourself a moment to come down and get comfortable. All the way down, let your head rest comfortably onto the mat. Take your last few fidgets to find a comfortable position for your body before allowing yourself to become still. Your hands can either rest onto the floor alongside you, just like your Shavasana, or perhaps you want to rest one hand onto your belly and one hand onto your chest to help you tune into your breathing so that you can physically feel it as the hands rise and fall with the up and down of the chest. Just giving yourself a moment and a few deep breaths here to start to feel settled, finding stillness, and finding that calming, relaxing little mode in your mind, just allowing everything to feel like it's melting away until all that is left is the in and out of your breath allowing the body to soften and to relax. And then gradually allowing that breath to grow deeper. Each time you breathe in, let it last just a moment longer. And then matching that length as you breathe it out all the way to the bottom. Allowing the strength of the breath to grow and noticing that feeling of energy that you get with each nice deep breath in. Maintaining that feeling of softness and calm as you breathe out. Great, last one, take a deep breath in. And a slow breath out. Lovely. And then letting your feet step together. So bringing the legs together, reaching your arms up above your head. So you're making yourself as long as you can. Take a nice deep inhale as your fingertips reach overhead, point through the toes. And then as you exhale, curl your knees in towards your chest to give your legs a little hug. And then exhale, let your chin roll towards your chest, your forehead towards your knees as you round your back. Releasing that feet back to the floor, stepping them away from you. Use your inhale, hands back above the head, reach through the toes, reach through the fingertips. Exhale, knees curl in towards your body, giving them a nice little squeeze. Inhale, round your shoulders off of the mat, forehead towards your knees. Exhale, releasing your feet to the floor, stepping the legs back out. Arms go overhead, breathing in, lengthen. Breathing out, one knee at a time would be your easier option. Both knees at the same time is harder. Breathing in, chin to chest, forehead towards the knees, rounded spine. Exhale to release, step those feet away from you. Couple more times here, inhale, grow long. Exhale, curl the knees into the body. Inhale, round the shoulders away from the mat, press the lower back down. 
Exhale, releasing the legs, stepping them out one at a time. Last one, inhale, long through the body. Exhale, knees pull in, give them a squeeze with your arms, nice tight little ball. Inhale, round those shoulders off the mat, pull the forehead as close to the knees as you can. And then exhale to release, let your feet press down onto the mat. From there, we're going to cross our right leg over the top of our left. So lady leg style, really squeezing the thighs together. From there, hug the thighs in towards you, interlacing your hands round the back of the thighs. And as you squeeze the legs in towards you, think of your feet moving away from each other. And you can just start to draw some circles with your ankles, allowing the little joints in the feet to find some movement, cricking and cracking their way. Keep a little strong pull in the arms. You're really squishing those knees in towards you. The thighs are squeezing together. Holding here, breathing in. You can relax your ankles if you're still circling. Last one, breathe in. And then breathing out to untangle and simply switch sides. So left leg on top of right, squeeze the thighs together. Try to let there be no gap between the legs. Curl those knees tight in towards the body as you squeeze and bind around the back of the thigh. If you're still enjoying finding movement in the ankles and the feet, then please do go ahead. Otherwise, focusing on that tight pull with the arms, compressing the legs towards the body, keeping your lower back pinned down against the mat. Great, breathe in here. Breathing out. And then keeping your legs tangled just as they are here. See if you can roll your way up to seat. So your right leg will now be the one elongated out towards the top of the mat. Your left leg is crossed over the top with the sole of the foot planted on the outside of that right leg. Holding on to this front shin, sit yourself as tall as you can, trying to lengthen out the spine. And then exhale, left hand places behind you as you go into a twist, either just encasing this top leg with a little bit of a hug, or if you're feeling ready for a deeper twist, you can place the elbow to the outside of the thigh and then press the arm against the leg to help the body turn. Each breath in lengthens the spine, chest pulls towards the sky. Breathing out, both sit bones ground into the mat, rotating from the belly button. One more here, breathe in. Breathing out, come back to the center and switch over the leg. So left leg, reach it out, cross the right leg over the top, ground the whole sole of the foot and keep this knee nice and close to the body. Sit your torso up tall. Right hand places behind you, either keeping a, a hug of this leg or take the elbow around the thigh. As you look over that right shoulder, drawing your belly in towards your spine to make a little bit of strength to find space for your body to keep turning into. Breathing in, lengthen. Breathing out to turn. Great, and then coming all the way back to the center. Cross your legs in front of you, so the ankles to cross, making yourself a small little ball, so knees nice and close to your chest. See if you can hold your feet as you hug them in towards your body, finding a little bit of balance onto your bum here, chest is tall. And then maybe you can find momentum to roll over your knees into a tabletop position, otherwise spin your legs around as usual and come to find yourself onto all fours, shoulders above your wrists and hips right on top of the knees and keep your toes untucked for this one in case you want to take a variation that's coming up. So cats and cows, we're gonna inhale, ribs drop down to the mat, chest lifts, looking forwards. And as you exhale, rounding into your cat pose, we're gonna hold for a few moments longer than just one breath. So pushing your spine to the sky, hollowing out through your belly, strong through your arms, keep pushing. Breathing in, drop the ribs back down, scoop the chest forwards, looking forwards. Breathing out to round, hollowing out the belly, pushing through the hands. Great, same again, breathing in. 
As you breathe out, if you're wanting to make this harder, press the tops of the feet into the mat and let the knees float just away from the floor. Rounded spine, tailbone tucked, chin to the chest. Inhale, the knees drop down if you lifted them. Ribs drop, chest lifts, look forwards. Exhale, doming the back. Option to float the knees, press the tops of the feet into the mat, hug the belly into the spine. Pushing. Drop the knees down, breathing in. Ribs drop, squeeze the shoulder blades together, look forwards. Breathing out again, rounding. Shoulder blades are broad across the back. Same option, floating those knees if you're trying to make things a little firier. Last one here, breathing in. And breathing all the way out. Holding this for the last time, inhale. And then exhale, if you lifted the knees, drop the knees, widening them a little wider than your hips towards the edges of the mat. Sit your bum to your heels, come into child's pose. Forehead can rest onto the mat. Arms to stay nicely elongated out above you and giving your hands a little press into the floor to keep sinking your bum back towards your heels. And letting the weight of your head be supportive against the floor, let your head drop and find softness across the back of the neck, the shoulders, heaviness through the front of the body, belly drops towards or between the thighs and the chest falls towards the floor. This is a lovely shape to return to at any point if you're feeling the need for a little rest, somewhere to come to rest your forehead down and to reconnect with your breathing until you feel ready to continue. So with your inhale, rocking back up onto the knees, tuck the toes under behind you, feet hip distance apart, lift your hips into the sky to come into downward facing dog. Thighs push towards the back of the room chest pushes towards the thighs and let your head still hang freely between the arms the neck and the shoulders on the back of the shoulders stay nice and soft breathing in keep lifting the sit bones high and breathing out again breathing in keep pushing into the hands breathing out really warming up those shoulders keep a nice firm press think of the crown of the head staying as far away from the mat as you can heavy through your heels sit bones high towards the sky keep holding keep breathing inhale exhale last one breathing in very good shoulders are working walk your hands all the way to the back of the mat let your heels touch down, your feet are hip distance apart, and then ragdoll fold. So softly bent knees, belly rest towards the thighs as your arms dangle freely, or you can cross them. The head dangles nice and loose as well, so releasing any tension in the neck. And if you wanted to take a few sways from left to right, that's always available for you. Keep focusing on a deep belly breath. Draw the breath to the bottom of the lungs. Using your exhales to soften and feel heavy through your upper body. Last one, breathing in. And breathing out, let your arms dangle freely if they're not already. And then we're going to do some sort of ragdoll scoops. It's a nice way to find sort of liquid movement into the body. So you're going to roll your way up to stand quite loosely, rounded spine, chin towards chest as you unravel the body. And then allow yourself to flop back down, belly towards thighs, hang, hang your head in front of your legs. Use your inhale to flop the body all the way up to stand. The exhale, drop the belly to the thighs, dangle through the arms. Again, inhale, you can move at your own pace here. Think about finding a whole range of movement in the spine. You're going from a rounded shape, unraveling, broadening across your chest at the top. Good, one last time, rounding down. Unravel all the way up to stand. Once you get there, interlace your hands behind your back, palm to palm, breathing in. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. The fist draws towards the floor as you broaden across your chest, lifting your chin away from your chest. Good, breathe into the front of the body. 
and then breathing out, releasing the hands once again, bring the belly down towards the thighs, this time walking the hands all the way out to the top of the mat into plank. So the shoulders are coming with you right on top of your wrists. Your heels are pushing away from you, so back towards the back of your mat, as if you're trying to be as long and tall as you can from the crown of your head to the rear part of your heels. Tailbone tucks under, so there's a light squeeze of your bum muscles, your thighs squeeze in towards each other, and really hug your belly up towards your spine. Inhale, holding. Exhale, keep pushing. Always option to do planks on our knees if we prefer, giving a little bit of extra support to the weight of the lower body. Last one, breathe in. And then breathing out, drop your knees to the mat, to bum towards your heels. Let your arms come alongside your legs this time to give your shoulders a little bit of a rest. Forehead to rest onto the floor, making yourself a small ball and focus on just a couple of nice deep breaths, bringing a nice fluid breath back into the body. Great, inhale, ripple your way up. Let yourself sit tall onto your shins. You can tuck your toes or if this doesn't work for you for any reason, take a different seat. We're sitting the chest nice and tall and then taking our arms wide like a cactus. So elbows out alongside the shoulders, excuse me, wrists and hands stacked on top of the elbows. Keeping yourself as tall as you can. As you breathe in, you're going to twist your chest towards the right side of your mat, noticing how it's not your deepest twist ever because you've got no leverage, nothing to push against. You're using the strength in your core to help your torso turn. Inhale, bring it back to center. Exhale, go round to the left. Turning through the chest, keep those shoulder blades pinned back so the elbows stay wide. Inhale to center. Exhale towards the right, twisting. Inhale, center. Exhale to the left, keep broad across your chest. Last one, inhale to the center. And then exhale, turning to the right, hold your belly in, pull the chest round. Last side, I think we started on the right, so let's do one more on the left. Turn the chest, press the shoulder blades back, find that strength in your torso and then bring yourself back to center, releasing your arms and maybe just a couple of rolls of the shoulders, a few little wiggles into the upper body to release your weight out of that. Hands then come back onto the mat in front of us, tuck the toes behind, lift the knees, lift the hips and find your way back into down dog. A nice opening of those armpits wide, keep your shoulder blades broad across your back. Couple of breaths, inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale. And then on your exhale, rocking yourself back forwards towards your plank or your supported plank. We're coming straight into a side plank. So left hand is going to stay down. The right arm is going to the sky and you either can leave your feet staggered, one in front of the other. You can drop your left knee down for a supported side plank or you can stack your feet on top of one another to make it even harder. Breathing in, reach your fingertips tall. Breathing out, see if you can tap the outside of your mat, just outside your left hand, so you're twisting underneath. Breathe in, arm to the sky. Breathing out, tap towards the floor as far as you can. Keep your hips lifted, breathing in. Last one, bring that hand down, tap the mat, and then come straight the other side. Place your right hand down. Roll yourself onto the other foot or the outside of the other foot, same options. This time, left arm is to the sky, breathing in. Breathing out, tap the outside of the mat, or just tap down to the floor as an alternative. Inhale, back to the sky. Exhale, tapping, find a twist through the torso. Inhale, it's our last one. Exhale, let your hand come, tapping the floor. Let that left hand come back to the mat, knees to drop down. Bending your elbows as your chest comes forwards and let yourself come down onto your belly. Let yourself rest and you can rest your forehead down onto the mat for a moment as well. Releasing your arms alongside your body, just giving yourself a moment to recover from that. A deep breath in and a slow breath out. Great, bring your hands underneath your chest, tuck those toes under behind you, and then press your way via your knees, lifting your hips back into the sky, finding that down dog, and trying to maintain that soft and long breath. 
softness across the face and heaviness through those heels. Keep that length in the back of the leg. Using your inhale, looking forward to the top of the mat. On the exhale, you can either walk or jump your feet in to the top of the mat. Use your inhale, halfway rise. Chest lengthens forwards as your thighs push back. And on your exhale, forward fold, fingertips to the floor, dangle your head in front of your legs. Use your inhale to come all the way up to stand, arms reach to the sky, gaze up towards them. And then exhale, release your arms alongside your body, find yourself standing tall towards the top end of your mat, a broadness across your chest and a softness into your limbs. So we're going to move through a couple of rounds of a modified sun salute. Um, I'll be guiding us through with a, with a knees down version. We're skipping out our back bends, our up dogs. If you are used to practicing chaturanga with your knees lifted, you can of course take that variation. But we're gonna move nice and slowly because when we're working on our strength, we want to make sure we're moving with control. So slower the better. With a nice deep breath in, let your arms circle wide, lifting. Breathing out to hinge at the hips, fingertips come to the mat, push your hips to the sky, your knees can bend so that you can touch down. Inhale, hands to the shins, lengthen the chest forward, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, the hands go to the mat, both feet step back and into plank or a supported plank with the knees down, push your heels backwards. Breathing in here, breathing out, drop those knees down. The weight is gonna shift forwards as if you're planching over your wrists. Bend your elbows, keep them close to your ribs. Aim for halfway to the mat, 90 degrees, and then press your way all the way back up. The toes tuck behind you as your hips lift to the sky and into down dog, pausing here. So if that's halfway lower, is causing you to collapse or you're very much struggling to push your way back up, don't go quite so low. Only bend your elbows and lower your chest forwards and down as much as you can maintain control. So that might mean a smaller angle, a smaller push-up, but that's somewhere to start from so that you can build strength safely and effectively. Use your inhale, look forwards to the top of the mat. On the exhale, walking or jumping, feet back to the top of the mat. With the inhale, hands to your shins, lengthen the chest forwards. And as you exhale, forwards fold, fingertips to the mat, soften through the neck as your head dangles. Inhale, rising up to stand, arms alongside the ears grow tall. We're going to repeat that sequence as you exhale, hands to the mat, soften through the neck as your head dangles. Inhale, halfway rise, engage your quads to press your thighs backwards. Exhale, hands to the floor, feet to step back into your high plank, Engage your core by tucking that tailbone and breathe in. Breathing out, the knees drop down, the weight pitches forwards again, so only as far as you can maintain control. Elbows stay glued to the ribs. Aim for about halfway, shoulder blades squeeze together, and then press your way back up to the top of the push-up. Tuck the toes under behind you, hips lift to the sky, and come back into your down dog. These are always uh, little pauses in down dog. You can always choose to pause in child's pose. If your arms need a little bit more of a rest, it's a lot of upper body work that we're working at at the moment. Don't you worry, we're moving on to the legs in a minute. Breathing in, breathing out. Last one, breathe in. Breathing out, looking forwards to the top of the mat, walking, stepping, jumping, any way you like, up to the top of the mat. Use your inhale, halfway rise, and your exhale to forward fold. Inhale, rises you to stand, thighs squeeze together, tailbone stays tucked, and then one final time, third one, exhale, folding over. Inhale, lengthen forwards, long spine, sit bones backwards. Exhale, hands to the floor, stepping your feet back into a plank or a supported plank. Keep your shoulder blades broad across your back for strength. Breathe in, breathing out. The knees drop down, the weight is coming forward so that as you bend your elbows, your chest is coming in front of your fingertips halfway to the floor. Press it back to the top strong through the arms and then return your hips to the sky and into your down dog. 
as you hold here. See if you can just elongate the breath a little bit. It's likely to become a little shorter when you start to become challenged. So use these moments to see if you can take a deeper, slower breath in. Slowing the breath out just the same. Again, breathing in. Breathing out. Very good, guys. Inhale, looking forwards. Exhale, stepping your feet, walking or jumping your feet back to the top of the mat. Using your inhale, halfway rise. And your exhale to fold, compressing your belly to your thighs. Inhale brings you all the way up to stand. Arms go high, gaze goes to the hands. And then exhale, release your hands alongside your body. Back into your mountain pose and do feel free to take sips of water. Make sure you're well hydrated as this is quite a challenging little sequence. So moving away from our upper body and a little bit more into our lower body now. Inhale, send those arms back to the sky, gazing up. Breathing out, forward fold. Hands come to the floor, head releases, nice and loose in front of the legs. Inhale, hands to the shins, halfway rise. And then exhale, hands to the floor, leaving the left foot at the top of the mat. Step your right foot all the way back, big long stride. Drop down onto the knee, keep the toes tucked under behind you at the back of the mat and then peel your body away from your front thigh so that you come nice and upright into your lunge. Two options here. You can do the, this next dynamic movement with your hands, excuse me, your hands to your waist or to your hips. If you wanna make things a little more challenging, you can take your arms above your head, aiming to hold towards your own elbows or you could hold your own wrists or you could simply take your hands to the sky. So with those toes tucked under behind you, you're going to think of ripping your mat in half by pressing into the ball of the foot and rising all the way up into a, well, beyond a high lunge. Both legs are now straight. As you exhale, re-bend both legs, both knees bend and either rest the knee down or you can make it more challenging by hovering the knee off the mat. Breathing in, both legs straight, rise tall. Breathing out, both knees bend, keep your torso upright, either hover or rest the knee down. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, sinking down. Last one, inhale, straighten. As you exhale, re-bend, letting your knee rest down if you were one of the uh, adventurous type that kept it uh, hovering. Release your hands down and interlace your hands onto your thigh. Untuck those back toes now, press the top of the foot into the mat. And as you push your hands into your thigh, think of your chest leaning back, creating as much distance as you can between your chest and your thigh. Your hips dropping forwards and down, finding a squeeze through your right glutes. So we're trying to lengthen into the front of this right hip here. Don't know about you, but my breath definitely got a little quicker there. So again, see if you can slow the breath down. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. One more, breathing in. And breathing out. Great. So retuck those back toes. We're just coming to the top of that position. So no more, no more reps. Come all the way back up so that your both legs are straight. Hands are going to come in front of your chest and we're going to transition towards warrior three. So warrior three is the capital T shape. We're going to bend into the front leg, transferring our weight forwards. Take a little hop of the back leg, finding some balance, hopefully. Your chest is coming forward as that back leg reaches back. Now, see if we can take this warrior three with a bent standing leg. So it's like you're squatting down into that standing leg. Use an inhale, see if you can straighten it out. Feel your whole body rise away from the floor. Take another little bend into that standing leg. Inhale, straighten it all the way back up. Good, that left leg is feeling it. Take a bend the knee, last one, little squat. And then rise all the way up again. Nice tall warrior three. And then gently placing that foot down towards the back of the mat, rising away. Woo! Giving that left leg a little round of applause. Turn all of your toes to face the right side of your mat. So you're into a wide legged stance and your toes are a little inwards of each other for a wide-legged fold. Hands can start onto your waist. Breathing in, lift the chest, lengthen the front line of the body, squeeze the shoulder blades together. 
Breathing out, your chest comes forwards as you start to fold. Think of your sit bones pushing backwards. The spine stays long as your fingertips come to rest either onto the mat, maybe onto a block if you're using a block here, or you can keep a bend into your knees to let your fingertips rest somewhere. Otherwise you end up holding quite a intense squat for far too long. So in our fold here, we're finding length in the back of the legs and into the inner thighs. Use your breath in, keep lengthening. Bye, Benny. Breathing out. Again, breathing in. And breathing out. Now you're welcome to stay into this nice delicious stretch or you can just start finding some movements into the legs. So bending your right knee as if you're doing a little bit of a side lunge, sitting your bum towards your right heel and then switching sides, straighten out, left knee bends, sink your weight over towards that foot. And simply, and I say simply, it's not a simple move, but simply moving from left to right trying to focus on that inner thigh stretch of your extended leg. Obviously that bending leg is working hard, holding your body weight here. Great, bring yourself back to center, two straight legs or the middle, wherever that was for you. Use an inhale again, chest pulls forwards. And then exhale, walk your hands to the left side, back to face forwards. All toes turn with you. Drop your back knee down to the floor, untuck the toes, and let both hands come to the inside of the leg for our lizard lunge so you can wiggle your left foot a little wider if you need to. Keeping the chest nice and long, the spine pulling forwards. You can stay onto the hands if you have room and you want to deepen your pose. Your right elbow can drop to the mat or perhaps a block would be a nice middle, middle level. The left elbow might put up a little bit more of a fight but you can see how that's working for you today. Keep your left knee squeezing in towards your shoulder. Now just taking a nice big stretch of the legs here. Even though we're working on our strength, we like a nice stretch too. Breathing in, lengthen. Breathing out, keep sinking. And then lifting up onto the hands if perhaps you lowered down. Leave your right hand where it is or perhaps a little wider towards the edge of the mat. Your front foot, turn it out at about 45 degrees. Take a twist towards your front thigh as you push the left knee away from you. So you're rolling your front foot out onto the pinky edge, pinky toe edge of the foot, pushing that left knee wide. So a big stretch into the left hip as your right side of your pelvis drops down towards the mat. Use the breath in to think of inflating into the chest. Puff your chest up tall. Your exhales to stay heavy through your hips. Great, last one to breathe in. And then breathing out, roll the leg back to the center. Hands to go either side of the foot. The back toes tuck under, the knee lifts, and then we step this foot back as the hips rise to the sky and back into downward facing dog. Just two breaths here, inhale, lengthening the sit bones tall. Exhale, heavy through the chest, back towards the legs. One more, inhale. Exhale, looking forwards to the top of the mat, walking, jumping, anything you like. Bring your feet back to the top of the mat. Inhale, chest pulls forwards, tabletop shape through the spine. Exhale to fold, hands to the mat, releasing your head. On the inhale, come all the way up to stand. Arms go tall, gazing towards them, pull the ribs in. Exhale to forward fold, bringing your hands back to the floor as you push your hips to the sky. Inhale, lengthening your chest forwards, halfway rise. This time as you exhale, the right foot stays at the top of the mat, the left foot steps all the way back, the toes stay tucked under and drop your knee down to the mat to begin with. We then rise up and out of the lunge to begin with, trying to keep the torso nice and upright. The same options if you remember what we just did on the other side. Hands are either onto your hips or your waist, they can be in the sky or perhaps you can reach towards your elbows and find a real opening into this upper body section. So the toes stay tucked. We're trying to not allow the torso to move forwards and backwards. We're just going up and down. So breathing in, press into the ball of the foot, rising tall, both legs straight. 
Breathing out, both knees bend. You're to bend into that, that, that back knee to drop to the floor or hover. Inhale, lengthening. Exhale to bend, hover or place it down. Inhale, pulling the body tall, both legs straight. Exhale, bending, low lunge. Last one, inhale, lifting tall. And exhale, this time allow the knee to rest down, untucking those back toes, releasing your arms from above your head and that interlaced hand now to press onto the front of the thigh. Take it down towards your knee, give yourself a little bit more space and then breathing in, think of working the elbows towards straight as your chest leans a little back. A light press of the back foot down against the floor as you drive the pelvis forwards and down. Breathing into the front of the body. Inhale. And exhale. One more. Breathing in. And then breathing out. Draw, draw your hips back out of that lunge a little bit. Retuck those back toes and one simple rise up to stand. So you find yourself back at the top of the lunge shape, both legs to be straight. A nice firm quad on this front leg. So think of really engaging the muscles on what's about to be your standing uh, balancing leg. Hands in front of your chest. Let your weight start to pitch forwards with control. Keep your core nice and tight. Take a little bounce of the back leg to float it towards the back of the mat. As your chest pulls forwards, warrior three, bend your standing leg. Inhale, straighten it out, feel yourself rise. Exhale, let it bend, keep your back leg lifted. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend. Great. Last time, inhale all the way to the top of that warrior three. Reach out through your back leg and then very softly with control, place the foot at the back of the mat. Turn all toes, this time to face the left side of your mat. I'll just turn around so you can see me. But finding that wide-legged stance again, so your toes a little bit inwards, the quads nice and engaged, and then your hands to come to your waist. Inhale, chest rises. On the exhale, think of keeping your spine as straight as you can, a tabletop spine the whole way as you fold, compressing the belly towards the thighs and then releasing your hands back onto the mat, allowing your body to fold down towards the floor. Let the neck be nice and loose. So think of your chin falling a little more towards your chest. And allow yourself to find that point where you've got a big old stretch, but you can still breathe, using your breath as an indicator of where you should be in this pose. The weight is ever so slightly forwards towards the toes. So the lightness that you feel in the heels allows you to keep rolling your sit bones high to the sky, finding that extra length in the back line of the legs. Breathing in. Breathing out. And then one more breathing in. On your breath out, let yourself come back onto the fingertips or the block so you can find like a halfway lift so your chest is pulling forwards. Take a bend into your knees, hands to come back to your waist as you rise your way all the way up tall. So from here, let your toes turn a little bit out away from each other. And we're going to move into those sideways, sideward moving lunges. Thinking of focusing onto the stretch on the straight leg, on the inner side of the straight leg, and the strength in the back of the muscles, so the, the back of your glutes, the back of the leg, on the leg that's sinking down. So your hands are going to come in front of your chest. Keep your, keep your torso as tall as you can. Exhale, sink your hips down towards your right heel. Press down through the outer edge of the extended leg. Inhale, rise as tall as both straight, both straight legs. Exhale, sinking to the left. Just go as deep as that you can. Everyone's hips are very different here. Inhale, back to the top, tall chest. Exhale, hips to heels, over to the right. Push your hips backwards, lift your chest. Exhale, to rise. Good, straight over to the left. Drop those hips down, press the feet into the mat, lifting your chest. Exhale, back to the top. Great, last one, over to the right. Pushing into the feet, come back to the center. And then exhale, all the way over to the left. 
Good. Then take your hands to the floor, walk your hands all the way back to the top of the mat. All of your toes turn to face forwards with you. So it should be, if I've got this right, be your right foot back at the top of the mat. Apologies if it's not, get your right foot to the top of the mat. Keeping your um, back toes untucked to the top of the foot onto the mat, wiggle your right foot out wide so it's on the edge. Both hands are on the inside of the thigh into your lizard lunge. The chest is pulling forwards and the same options are there for you if you want them to lower your forearms to a block or to the floor or staying on your hands. You could even use your blocks to bring your hands a little higher if you're finding that it's, it's already too intense and it's really rounding your spine. We're trying to keep the chest lengthening forwards. And if we're finding depth in the stretch, we're going as one. So the chest and the hips drop together. There's no point in dropping the chest if it's gonna push our hips higher. So imagine you're like a plank, one bit of, one bit of wood. Keep your front foot pressing down into the floor and the knee to stay close to the shoulder for this first one. Breathing. And then one more, breathing in. Breathing out, back onto the hands if you took any different variations. Left hand stays down quite wide towards the edge of the mat. The front foot turns outwards away from you and then twist your torso towards that right thigh. Press the knee away, rolling the foot onto the outer edge and finding distance between your knee and your chest as a little lean back as you twist to one side. The pelvis is dropping towards the mat as this knee pushes away from you. <laughs> Okay, pressing the knife edge of your foot down against the floor, breathing in, breathing out. Taking one last one here, inhale. As you exhale, hopefully nobody else's dog is in their way, sending your hands back to the mat, lift your back knee and send your front foot to the back of the mat, hips into the sky and into your downward facing dog. Finding that slow, controlled breath, a deep breath in and a slow breath out. Great, use your inhale. Rock your body forwards to plank, don't worry, we're not staying here for long. Your left knee, you're going to draw towards your left wrist. We're coming into pigeon. So place your knee down wider than your wrist. So the knee wants to be wider than your hip point. You've externally rotated there. Your back knee to drop down untuck the back toes and allow that back leg to wriggle away from you until you find the stretch into the left side, so into the outer hip, maybe also slightly into the inner part of your hip. That back leg wants to be directly behind you with the knee and the top of the foot pressing down. And don't worry, or yeah, no, definitely don't worry if there's a gap underneath your left hip, that's perfectly normal. We don't want to force our body down into that gap. You can always pop a little blanket or block under there if you want the support of something to rest against. Once you've found that stretch and you're happy here, you might be more comfortable to your forearms. You may be able to want to fold all the way down and rest in your forehead to the mat. Just making sure that your left knee feels happy here, doesn't feel any sort of tension, doesn't feel any sort of um, pressure. Back your way out of the stretch if you do, and just take a, a softer variation. Look after your knees, you only get one of each. Good, keep breathing here, inhale. Exhale. One more, breathe in. And then breathing out, walking your hands back in to sit yourself up nice and tall. This time we are going to let ourselves sit towards the left side of the mat. So you can sweep the right leg all the way forwards to the top of the mat. Shuffle yourself round so that right leg is now straight out in front of you. The sole of your left foot to the inner of the thigh and that left leg flops away. Toes pull up and back so you flex through the right toes. As you breathe in, reach for the sky and find as much length in your torso as you can. 
As you exhale, maintain that length as you send it forwards. Maybe your hands can find your toes. If you're using a strap, you can hook onto the strap to maintain a long spine. Otherwise, if none of that is available to you, you can leave your hands onto the floor, either side of your leg. Maybe you wanna hold onto your calf. Either way, we are pressing the back of the thigh down towards the mat to find that length, that stretch into your right hamstring. Trying to keep your attention into your lower spine and elongating from there. So your inhales, pull your belly out of the bowl of your pelvis. Your exhale to allow yourself to compress towards the leg, prioritizing your belly and your thigh rather than your head and your leg, despite the, uh, the name of this pose, which is head to knee pose. Um, that's not how we do it. We keep our spine long. We think of compressing the belly towards the thigh to find a nice safe hamstring stretch. Lovely last one, breathe in. And then breathing out, releasing your foot or whatever you have to sit yourself up tall. Your left hand is going to rest onto the floor behind you. Either your right leg that's straight, you're gonna think of planting the toes down towards the floor. As you breathe in, lift your bum off of the mat, reach your right arm alongside your ear, so off towards the back of your mat. Those right toes are planting, that leg stays straight and strong, and the left knee is supporting the weight of the body as you lift your hips. Think of rolling your chest open towards the sky a little more and really breathing into the front of the body here. So a full front body stretch, but finding lots of strength in the back of the body to do so. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more here, breathe in. And then breathing out, let your bum gently come back to the mat as you sweep yourself back to face forwards. Once again, tuck your feet in close to your body, so into a small cross-legged shape. Sit yourself nice and tall, hug your feet in, maybe see if you can hold your feet as you balance onto your bum, sitting yourself nice and tall. From there, maybe you can find that momentum to go over your knees, hands back onto the mat, feet step back, hips into the sky, and back into downward facing dog. Broaden across the shoulder blades, holding the belly in firm, breathing in, come forwards, plank. On your exhale, right leg this time, send the knee just wider than the wrist, the shin is on a diagonal across your mat, back knee rests down and then wiggle the knee away from you until you find this stretch in the chunky path, the outer path, that right hip. Again, this gap here underneath your hips is very normal and very acceptable. You can then, once you're there, come to the forearms. You can stay on the hands if that's enough for you, or you can slide your hands all the way out and let your forehead rest on the mat instead. Trying to maintain a level pelvis, not allowing your weight to be biased to the left or the right. Keep yourself level. Breathing in for the chest to pull forwards. Breathing out to keep your body weight sinking directly down. Two more, breathe in. Breathing out. And then last one, breathe in. Breathing out, walking the hands back in. So you're coming towards upright. This time you sit towards the right side, just nice and loosely, floppy. Swing that left leg to the front of the mat. Rearrange so that leg is straight out in front of you and the sole of the right foot meets the thigh. Right leg is nice and floppy off to one side. Breathing in, find length through the sides of the body. Lift your rib cage away from your hips and keep lifting away as you exhale and go forwards either with the strap to hold the foot, holding the toes or the foot yourself, or your hands to rest either side of the thigh, or of the calf, allowing yourself to allow your um, body weight to tip forwards. Use the inhale, think of your chest growing out towards your toes. Your exhale to keep that compression of belly towards thigh. Great, 
two more, breathing in. Breathing out. Last one, breathing in. And then breathing out, rise your way all the way up tall. So this time it's the left leg that will be the toes that are reaching towards the floor. Right hand goes behind you, nice and strong through that supporting arm. Inhale, lift your seat from the floor. Reach that left arm up and over alongside your ear. Finding that nice long line along the top left side of the body. Turning the chest a little more towards the sky if that's available to you and staying nice and heavy through the right hand, the right knee to support the weight of the body. Breathing, expand into your belly and exhale. Last one, breathing in. And then breathing out, draw yourself all the way back down onto your bum. Once again, giving your knees a little hug in towards your body, seeing if you can find that balance onto your bum. And what strength class would be a strength class without a little boat pose? So from here, you can either support the back of the thighs by holding the back of the legs here, or if you want to challenge that strength, reach your hands forwards. Think of your chest lifting to the sky as your shoulder blades pull in towards each other. So you've got a nice broad chest, a nice long spine. We're still thinking of lifting the ribs away from the hips and the toes to reach forwards. If you are uh, gifted in the hamstring department, you can uh, straighten out your legs, but not at the expense of your body having to lean further back. Keep holding, breathing in. It's our last little spurt of effort. Breathing out. Again, breathing in, keep holding. Draw your knees in towards your collarbones, breathing out. And then last one, breathing in. As you breathe out, crossing your ankles, doesn't matter which one's in front, let yourself come up into a comfortable cross-legged seat. With your next breath in, reach those arms to the sky, find height. And as you breathe out, the hands to come to rest onto the mat in front of you. The chin drops towards the chest so the neck is nice and loose. And allowing your body weight to tip forwards towards your shins, but ensuring your sit bones stay glued to the mat beneath you. Great, breathe in. And breathing out to walk the hands all the way back in. From there, sending your legs out wide into a big straddle shape. And I want you to find this shape without using your hands. So don't take your legs out. Put your legs out using the strength in your hips. And you can always give them a little shuffle, but try to resist using your hands. Use the strength in your legs. Try to make sure you're right up onto your sit bones. So sometimes picking your thighs up and slightly rolling them in so the fleshy part of your, of your legs comes more to the outside enables you to sit that little bit taller into your lower back. So that's the bit we're thinking of again, is maintaining this length here. Within this shape, the toes to stay to the sky, the knees to stay to the sky. And we either take our hands just behind our hips and encourage our body upright. And for a lot of us, this is where we'll stay because we'll already have the stretch into the inner groins, into the hamstrings, and we'll already feel quite challenged in this shape. There is always the option, if you are not feeling it yet, to take the hands forwards as you fold, but trying to focus your attention into that lower back so that the fold stays flat tabletop spine rather than just sort of causing us to hunch forwards and lose all the space within the torso. Maintain that space in your chest and your belly. Good, a few more breaths. Each inhale finds you length, creates you space. Each exhale encourages the body to soften and to fold. And then last one, breathing in. Using your breath out, releasing whatever shape that you have there and letting the soles of the feet come together. The little toes, uh, just make sure you have some space behind you on your mats here. The little toes stay connected. 
interlacing your hands for your butterfly stretch so knees are nice and wide holding onto your feet push your feet into your hands as your hands pull up against your feet sit yourself nice and tall and use the strength in the hips to push those thighs wider if you have more space in your hips here you might want to bend your elbows slightly and pitch the chest forwards but as before keeping that length in the spine particularly into your lower back To use the next breath in, keep that chest lifted. And then breathing out, releasing that tension, releasing your feet. Keeping your legs in this diamond shape, but don't have your feet too close to your bum. Make a bit of a larger diamond. You want to reach your arms forwards, and we're going to recline ourselves down onto our back, but keeping our legs wide into this diamond shape. So reach your arms forwards as a counterbalance. Slowly start to allow your body to roll back. Think of a tucked tailbone. The lower back finds the mat slowly coming down, pausing when it's just your shoulder blades that haven't yet found the floor. Your chin is pulling towards your chest, your lower back pushes down into the mat. From here, take your hands to the sky, gaze up towards them. Keep your lower back pushing down. And then from here, draw your knees up. See if you can get your knees to touch the back of your triceps. Keep reaching through those hands and suddenly we've found ourselves in a dead crow I know we didn't do the arm balance today, but this is just as hard. Squeeze those knees towards your arms. Keep your chin pulling towards your chest as you roll your shoulder blades away from the floor. Holding here, last bit guys, breathe in. Breathing out. And then last one, breathe in. On your breath out, let those shoulders come down. Keeping your knees in, just give yourself a little squeeze, maybe a soft little rock from left to right. And then from there, letting those knees fall over towards the right side and maybe propping um, a block underneath. I want you to really reach that left arm out towards the left side. So we're focusing on opening the front side of the left chest and shoulder here, just to stretch into that upper body um, strength work that we did. So pin that left shoulder down Maybe resting your right hand onto your belly and just focusing on drawing the breath all the way down so you can feel that hand rise. Softly breathing it out. and then all the way back via center. The knees then go straight over to the left. The right arm out towards the right, heaviness through that shoulder. And again, if propping your legs up a little bit onto a block or maybe a cushion that's easier to grab at home, allowing that right shoulder to find a little bit more opening here so we can get a nice upper body stretch. Left hand, wherever is comfortable, maybe onto your belly, breathing in. Breathing out. And then finally, drawing yourself back onto your back. If you wanted to put on any jumpers or socks before your last few moments of resting, Make yourself as comfortable as you can. Use any cushions or pillows that you have to hand to really let your body release here. Find heaviness in your limbs, closing the eyes and really feel yourself sinking down into the mat. Imagining this body shaped imprint into the floor as you melt down and soften. Allowing the breath to slow, to shallow.
with each and every exhale. Seeing if you can just release another little bit of tension or just another little joint or muscle within the body. And then using an inhale, finding some movements in the hands and the feet, taking that big stretch up above the head, just the way that we started. With the exhale, softly curling your knees in towards your body for a little hug. And then gently rolling your way up to seated. Feel your chest float on top of your hips. And with your final breath in, circle the arms wide into the sky. And with your final breath out, lowering the hands down towards the belly as your chin comes towards your chest. Namaste everyone and thank you so much for joining me this evening. Hopefully you felt that in all the right places. Um, if you want to do some more live classes, I'm doing three a week. So there's this one, there's Thursday evenings, which is gentle yoga at 6 p.m. all GMT. Um, and then there's Sunday mornings at 9.30 as well. If you have any questions, whack them into the comments box and uh, hope you have a lovely night's rest after such a tricky class. Well done, guys. And subscribe. <laughs> and subscribe would be lovely. Thank you.